Thank you very much, Brother Phil. Well, good evening, friends. It's certainly a privilege to be here tonight in this capital of New Hampshire. New Hampshire holds very much for me since a little boy. I can well remember my hunting trips up in the White Mountains and across the Presidential Range and around Gorham and the parts of the country up in there. Good friends that I've met years ago. So I've always wanted to come to New Hampshire for a, a service to pray with the sick people and to visit with you. It's too bad that we just have just two nights here and just run right in like this and right out. I've said it's something like um, saying, how do you do goodbye? So, but I'm sure that the blessed Lord will help us uh, to get better acquainted in the years that is to come. We're anticipating coming back sometime for a longer stay. This time we're just trying to get acquainted with each other. And I'm sure you love him. I just stepped into the door and heard you saying amen to what Mr. Vale was saying. You believe God and believe that he still lives. He, he isn't any different than what he ever was. He isn't any smarter. He can't be any smarter because he was infant to begin with. And so everything that he says, every statement he makes has to be perfect because if he could grow in knowledge like we did, and he would be smarter. He could, he could fix things and arrange it a little different. But when God makes a, a statement or says anything, it has to ever remain that way because he is perfect to begin with. Right. Now, we, the, our generations, we're finite. And our generations get just a little smarter, a little smarter, as the scripture says, weaker but wiser. And we grow in knowledge, but God can to be infinite. He just has to remain just perfect all the time. So then if a crisis would arise at any time and God was called on the scene to act, then the way he acted that time, he'll have to act each time that way in order to be God. See, because if he doesn't act the second time the way he did the first time, then he, he knows more about it than he, does, he did wrong when he acted the first time. See? You'd have to act the same each time. If, if the world's in the need of a Savior, then if he pre presented a Savior, a way of salvation in the Garden of Eden, to a way of escape, he has to continue to do that in order to be God. If sickness arose into the camp and God made an atonement for healing, he has to remain on that, or he did wrong when he healed the first person. He did wrong when he forgave the first one. The, he's infant. Infinite, and we have to accept it that way and believe it that way. And if you believe it that way, it'll work that way. It's just, and I come tonight to visit with you for these two nights of service as your brother. And I'm so happy to be here with you. And I don't come rec representing any certain denominational church. We don't represent any denomination. Myself, I was a missionary Baptist. Mr. Vail here was a Northern Baptist. I don't belong to the Baptist Church anymore. I'm just come out into the gospel to work and stood by the breach and said, We're brethren, whosoever will let him come. And what little influence the Lord God has given me, I do not try to place it upon any certain denomination because I believe that a denomination is not what God looks at. He looks at the people that's in the denomination. Most of my life, or a great deal of it, has been on a ranch. I remember up on Troublesome River, where we used to herd the cattle, run them up on through the Repertoire Forest, and they had a drift fence. I don't know what you Eastern people know about a drift fence, but to keep the cattle from drifting back off of the forest. You can raise a ton of hay, then, and you have from the Chamber of Commerce the brand. You can put a cow on the forest if you can raise a, a ton of hay to take care of the cow through the winter. And now the ranger... He always counts the cattle as he goes in and checks them. And many times have I sat there on my leg across the horn of the saddle watching the ranger. He never noticed the brands so much, how well, many brands there was, because he kind of knew that anyhow. But he checked the blood tag in the ear. The, the blood tag, they had to, no matter what the brand was, you ha it had to be a thoroughbred Hereford or it could not go on the range. No matter how good the brand was placed on it, it had to be a third-bred Hereford or it could not graze on that range. 
I think that's what will be at the great gate when we get there. Amen. You want to say, are you branded Methodist, Pentecostal, or Baptist, Lutheran? It's what the blood mark is. Amen. All those that are born to the Spirit of God by the blood of Jesus Christ will be welcome in no matter what brand you're wearing. Now, and upon that now, we'll open his word and speak to you from his word. I'm not a theologian. I said lots of times that I didn't get a chance to get an education. I'm not much of a preacher. I don't know the word too well, but I know the author real well. So I love him, and he'll reveal the word as we go along. Now let us bow our heads just a moment while we speak to him before we open the word. Blessed and eternal God, as we come humbly as the creatures of time into thy presence, we ask that you'll remember us, Lord, and will forgive us of all of our sins and trespasses against you. And now as we open this little building tonight to the gospel, we would ask that you would dedicate our hearts to your word and to your spirit as we dedicate the building and ourselves to the service of the living God. And Father, we pray tonight that your blessed Son will come in the form of the Holy Ghost and will reveal to us, Lord, his presence. Oh, may he do for us tonight exceedingly abundantly. Bless all these dear people who are out tonight. We pray that a special blessing rests upon the sick and the needy. For they've come for that purpose, Lord, that they could be healed. And the reason that they're here proves that there is a healing fountain somewhere. As David said in the days gone by, when the deep calleth to the deep. There's got to be a deep to respond to that call. So, Father, they are here tonight because they believe you and are looking forward to seeing that fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. O oh Lord, grant this blessing to us tonight, and when we leave from this place, may we go like those who came from Emmaus. After they'd walked all day with Jesus, he had talked to them after his resurrection that first beautiful Easter morning. Yet they did not recognize him. And when he got them inside in the evening time, in the twilight, perhaps about this time, when the doors were closed, he did something. And they recognized that no other man did it that way but him. And their eyes were open, and they knew that it was him that he had raised from the dead. Oh, their hearts leaping for joy. They run back to meet the rest of their party and saying, Truly, the Lord is risen. Lord, will you do something tonight for us, just like you did it before your crucifixion, that this company might know that you ever remain God. And when we go to our different homes, May we stay like those as they went. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? For we ask it in his name. Amen. Now tonight, our company's small and just a little bit acquainted. And now maybe tomorrow night, the Lord willing, I'd like to maybe preach just a little to you or speak to you from the word. Tonight, just a little opening program that we use along the road to introduce the ministry that we're trying to represent of our Lord. Just a little uh, opening message. And our theme will be that found in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And over in St. John 12, 20, we read this for context. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethesda, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. And that's what I want to speak on. We would see Jesus. Now, if the scripture says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, now, to me, this Bible is either the truth or it is not the truth. If it is God's Word, then it's truth. If it isn't truth, then it isn't God's Word, because God would never have anything to do with anything but what was absolutely unadulterated truth. We believe that. I'm sure you do too. 
It must be the truth. So let us look now into the scriptures. And now I believe that this is the word. And my faith is built on this. Many times have I held the Koran in one hand and the Bible in the other before half a million Mohammedans and say, one of them's got to be right and one of them's got to be wrong. Now, if Mohammed's a living, let him speak. If Jesus is a living, let him speak. You decide. Don't never be afraid to put any divine promise of God to action. Now remember, don't never forget this quotation. That the right mental attitude towards any divine promise in this Bible will bring it to pass. Right. Just remember that. The right mental attitude towards any divine promise that's written in this Bible will bring it to pass. So now just keep that on your mind. If God made a promise and you'll take the right attitude towards that promise, God will fulfill everything that He's promised. I know that to be true. I've seen sarcoma's cancer heal with that. Because people believe that it was the truth. Now when you go to speak of divine healing, sometimes they say, Brother Branham's a divine healer. That's wrong. There's no such a thing as a man being a divine healer. Never was and never will be. Jesus was not a divine healer. He said he wasn't. It's not me that doeth the work. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. It's always been God. In Psalms 103, 3, he said, He's the Lord that forgives all of our iniquity and heals all of our diseases. And now, how do we teach divine healing today? That it's, he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. Now, when you say, if I say in this little group tonight, how many of you have been saved, got saved last year? Well, some of you would raise your hand. How many got saved 20 years ago? Some would raise your hand. Well, that's potentially the truth, but yet it isn't all the truth. You were saved 1,900 years ago when Jesus died for you. You just accepted your pardon a year ago and 20 years ago and so forth. Now, that's, see, it's, it's a redemptive blessing that Jesus finished at Calvary where he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. No man can forgive your sins unless you've sinned against him. And no man can heal your diseases because it's already been done. If Christ himself stood here tonight with this suit on it, he'd give me. He could not heal you. He's already done it. See, he, if you've been redeemed, how can you be redeemed the second time? You've already been redeemed. If you had something in a pawn shop and went and, and would give a receipt and you got a receipt that you redeemed that thing from the pawn shop... How can you redeem it the second time? It's already been redeemed. So we are a redeemed product of God's grace. Praise be to his holy name. He's a, we are redeemed now, physically and spiritually. Now, what's happened? We are now drawing the earnest of our salvation. And if there is no earnest money down for divine healing, then there is no resurrection. If there isn't the joy and the new life that makes new nature and a new person, then there is no eternal life. We, we'll have an end someday. But if we got eternal life, it has no end because that's God's life. And then if we have the joy of that in our hearts and we know that we've passed from death to life and our life shakes up with what God promised, then we've got the earnest of our salvation knowing that we'll live forever because the attributes of His Spirit is working through us. And then if there is no divine healing, then there is no resurrection. See? So we must have both witnesses as both our complete eternal life and for our resurrected body. Now, I believe the Word to be the full Word of God. Now, if God can do something that's not written in this Word. I don't He's big enough He can do what He wants to. But to me, I believe just what He wrote here is a plenty. I don't want any more than He wrote, but I want all that He wrote. See? I don't want to add anything to it or take anything away from it. I just want what He said. Now... There's many times that people might say, well, different things with uh, this and have little theologies and little creeds and so forth. That's all right. But to me, I like to say just what he said. Then I just say it the way he said it. 
And then you know you're right. Many of you men here tonight, you teachers, know in the Old Testament they had a way of knowing whether a man was telling the truth or not. And they, all, they took a man to the temple, and they had what's called a Urim Thundum. And that was the breastplate Aaron wore. And it had twelve stones in it, representing the twelve tribes of Israel. And when a prophet prophesied, dreamer told a dream, and if it was the truth, and God was in that dream or in that prophecy, all those lights put out a supernatural light, a conglomeration of lights that God was answering back. How many knows that's the truth? Did you Bible uh, readers here? I didn't have ministers raising that. It was a conglomeration to represent supernatural. Well, then, if, then the Aaronic priesthood and the Mosaical laws passed, and now we have a new priesthood and a new Urim Thundum. The old Urim Thundum passed with the priesthood, but we got a new Urim Thundum. That's God's Bible. And then if the man is telling the truth and representing the truth from God's Word, the same Word that was in the beginning will manifest and make it positive before you in the supernatural. If that isn't just as true as I know how to say it, I, I don't know it in the Scripture then. God made a promise, and God has to keep that promise. See? Now, the question was tonight to these Greeks, they asked this question, and I do not believe it would be anything different to us tonight. Every man that ever heard the name of Jesus longs to see him. And these Greeks had come up, they were a man of wisdom and understanding, and uh, Greek seeks wisdom, the Jews sign. And these Greeks came to the feast, and they had heard of Jesus, and they come to one of his servants and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Now, I believe that would be the desire of every heart here. Wouldn't you like to see him tonight? We all would. Well, then, if, uh, if we would love to see him, and these Greeks was given the privilege of seeing him. Now, if they were given the privilege to see him, and we've got the same desire tonight to see him, and the scripture says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why can't we see him? Does that sound right? Look, if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and they were given the privilege of seeing Jesus, then today they say that he is the same today that he was then, then if we have the same desire, why can't we see him? Sure we can, because he promised it. He, you just have to go according to his word, work his word. If you had an artesian well on this side spurting water 50 feet in the air and a crop on this side burning up, you can't stand there on this hill and scream over this water, come over here and water my crop, come over and water my crop. It'll never do it. But if you work according to the laws of gravitation, it'll bring that water right over there and water that crop. And if you're standing out in the field, this dark, way out in the woods, and you need a light, and you say, oh, great electricity, the air is full of it. Franklin tells us there's enough in every room to light up the room of electricity. Oh, great electricity, you're here, scientists prove you're here. Now, make a light so I can walk out of the woods. It'll never do it. But if you work according to the laws of electricity, it'll light up the woods for you. See? It's there. Now, God made a promise. And if we'll work according to the laws of that promise and God, his laws of the Spirit, we, he'll do just exactly what it said he'll do. Now, you can't stand out and imagine something and holler for it and scream for it or do penance and say rosaries and run over your knees on rocks and, and, and go to the church and be... That, that isn't what it takes. It takes the law. And faith is what God's law is for you. You must have faith. In order to have faith, you can't base faith just on the shifting sands of man's theology. Faith takes its everlasting stand upon the unmovable rock of God's eternal word and rest there. Just like Moses' mother, when she put him in the, the little ark and stood him out of the bulrush, there she stood there putting her baby in the very jaws of the alligators and, and death. But you see... Faith can take its stand on the rock of ages. 
right over a grave and looked beyond that to him and said, I am the resurrection and life. See? Faith knows no defeat. No, sir. Faith cannot be defeated. So in order to see Jesus, we've got to have faith to believe that he's sure and keeps his promise. Now, let's go back into the scriptures just a little then. Now, the Bible said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if we can go back in the scripture and find out what he was yesterday, then we can expect him to be the same today. Is that right? If we find what he was. Now, the first place we find that he did not claim to be a healer. He claimed that it was his father that dwelt in him, did the work. We know that. And then we, we see that he did not claim it. He could just heal it random. St. John, now you take it down the scriptures. St. John 5, 19, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. Anybody ever read that? All right. Now, did he tell, is that the truth or is that an error? That's the truth. Verily, verily, that's absolutely, absolutely, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. The Father worketh, and I worketh hitherto. Now, you just passed by a great pool where thousands of people were laying, lame, halt, blind, withered, and he passed through that pool looking around. There was mothers of waterhead babies. There were people all crippled in the farm trying to get into the water. Passed right through the crowd, never touched a one of them, and looked around till he found a man laying on a pallet. Now, I guess you Yankees know what a pallet is. I was raised on one down south, just a quilt laying at the door. So then, they, uh, this fellow was laying on a little pallet. And Jesus, the Bible said, he knew as he had been in that condition for so many years, 38 years, I believe. Now, see, he knew it, Father had shown him. And he said to that man, Take up your bed and go into your house and turned around and left that whole multitude, thousands of lame, halt, blind, and withered laying there. And he was questioned. And he said, Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. In other words, see, it brought right back. The Father showed him where that man was laying there, his condition. He went to him, healed him, walked away. Give praise to God. He could do nothing else because the Father hadn't showed him nothing else. If that was Jesus yesterday, it's Jesus today. Now watch what he said. A little while and the world won't see me no more. Did he say that? Yet ye shall see me. Now the world is the unbeliever. We always know it's cosmos in the Greek, which means the world order. All right, the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, ye, the church, for I, I as a personal pronoun, I will be with you even in you to the end of the world. Does the scripture say that? We all know he said that. Now, how could he manifest himself now? He said, I am the, uh, the vine, ye are the branches. Now, the vine does not bear fruit. It, it gives life to the branch, and the branch bears fruit. You people up here in Concord ought to know that with your grapes and so forth, and, you, and your fruit. If you go to a grape tree, then, or a grape vine, you'd expect to find grapes if it's a grape vine. The vine won't bear the fruit, but the branches will be bearing grapes. That's right. If you go to an apple tree, if it's a good fertile uh, tree, it'll bring forth apples. A pear tree will bring forth pears. A watermelon vine will bring forth watermelon. A pumpkin vine will bring forth a pumpkin. Everything's known in itself. Then the Spirit of God in His church will reproduce the life of Christ if He is the vine and we are the branches. Certainly. You see, we've changed that. We've made it to joining church, teaching theology, having school. Nothing against that. But you see, it's not what he said. The works that I do shall you do also. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. A little while and the world won't see me no more, yet you'll see me. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here, for instance, this picture, I guess it was showing it a while ago. This picture here. 
They got that in Germany and all around the world. Since a little child, I saw that. Now, to me, if you'll pardon it, I, it's not my picture. I have nothing to do with this part. It's the angel of the Lord. Now, how many Bible teachers know in here that the angel of the Lord that led the children of Israel through the wilderness was Christ? Isn't that right? When he was on earth, he said, they was questioning St. John 6. He said, well, you, we know that you have a devil now. You say you're before Abraham, uh, before Moses, and uh, before this. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Is that right? Who was the I am? The angel that talked to Moses in the pillar of fire in the burning bush. He led the children of Israel through the wilderness. Then he was made flesh and dwelt among us. God made flesh. The Bible said he was. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. He was the tabernacle in which God lived in, born to virgin birth, and was in this tabernacle of his Son, manifesting, showing, expressing himself to the world, him being the Son of God, that he might bring other adopted sons into the kingdom. Now, when this pillar of fire was in him, at the end of his journey, he said, I came from God and I returned to God. Then he came from the pillar of fire and returned back to the same. If he told truth. If he was the I am that was in the burning bush. Now let's see if that's scriptural. A lot, very long after that, there was a one named Saul who later was called Paul. He was on his road to Damascus and all of a sudden a bright light flashed in his face that was brighter than the sun and even blinded Paul until he fell. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. Is that right? Back to the pillar of fire again. Same one that delivered Peter out of the jail not long after that. Then, in this last day, if he's come to the Gentile church, if this is his picture, George J. Lacey, the head of the FBI, examined it, the German examiner, Switzerland, all through the world, he said, there, you'll see it tonight if he comes. And you'll see it now, if that is the Spirit of Christ, it'll have to bear the same record, it'll have to bear the same fruit, it'll have to do the same thing, it'll have to declare the same God, it'll be exactly the fruit of the vine if we are his branches. Is that right? Now, it just can't work through one, it'll have to work through all of us. We're all his church. You Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Assemblies of God, whatever you are. We are his branches. And if we're in that vine, we bear his life. Can't keep from it. And if that pillar of fire is the same pillar of fire, it'll act the same way it did when it stood here and made flesh and dwelt among us. It'll be in our flesh tonight manifesting itself. Is that right? Then we would see Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's watch how it manifested itself in his days. Let's take, now we read out of St. John, the, I believe the 12th chapter. Yes, let's go back to the first chapter. You read it when you go home. Follow me now in the scriptures if you wish to, just for a few moments. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, notice, when Jesus was called into his earthly ministry, immediately there was one converted and run for his brother. And when... When he got, is my speaking too loud there? Is that about to make you deaf? I'm being used to speaking in outdoors and stadiums and things, and I don't mean to yell at you. But when he went to his, got his brother, and he brought his brother back, and we know his brother to be Simon Peter. At that time, he wasn't that name. So he came up into the presence of Jesus. Let's watch him just a minute now, see what Jesus was yesterday. And if we can find what he did yesterday, then he's got to act in his church the same today to be the same. Now keep that on your mind. And when Philip went and found, I mean, Andrew went and found his brother, and he brought him to him, and his first thing when Jesus saw this man, the Bible said he was an ignorant and an unlearned man, didn't, couldn't even sign his own name ignorant and unlearned and became the head of the church. What's our educational program got to do with that? A man who could not sign his own name had the keys of the heavens 
and the kingdom of God hanging on his side. St. Peter. It's correctly. An old fisherman. Didn't know his ABC. Probably couldn't count very far. Couldn't even sign his name. The Bible said he was both ignorant and unlearned. Scripture's right. That's in Acts 4. All right. Notice. John must too. But as soon as this old fisherman came up into the presence of the Lord Jesus, Jesus looked at him and he said, Your name is Simon and your father's name is Jonas. Is that right? What do you think that fisherman must have thought? How did you know me? Well, you must be the Messiah. How did you know me know that, what my name was and who my father was? And quickly then, one by the name of Philip, run around the mountain 15 miles to a place where he found a real good Presbyterian or, or a real good Orthodox believer. And he was out into the uh, vineyard, into the uh, olive orchard, a praying. And as soon as dramatized it so the little ones will get it. And as he went out into the orchard, perhaps his wife, when he went and said, Where is Nathaniel? Oh, Philip, we're so glad to see you. Nathaniel, he's back in the orchard. And here goes Philip back walking around through the orchard, seeing what he could find. After all, he heard someone praying. He looked under a tree. And there stood Nathaniel under the tree, or knelt him, rather, praying. And Philip waiting to see till he finished up. And when he said, Amen, and looked around, he said, Well, Philip, I'm glad to see you. He said, Come see who we have found. Oh, if this group tonight of you people here from Concord, in this great capital of one of the most beautiful states in the Union, if you could have that enthusiasm about Christ. He didn't wait to say, I'm glad to see you, nothing about it. He said, Come see who we found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. That enthusiasm. The church today has lost its enthusiasm. Why? Because it's got out of the vine. It's no more being energized by the Spirit. Wells of water bubbling up into everlasting life. They've lost that zeal. Something's missing. God remains the same. Christ remains the same. But His church has dissociated itself with His connection, the vine, the Spirit. And then when they seen this take place, what do you think happened? When he said, come see who we have found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And this orthodox man, very fine man, principal, every way, he said, now just a minute, Philip. You must have went off on the deep end somewhere. What good thing could come out of Nazareth? If you think that's the Messiah, if the Messiah would come, he'd come to the temple. That's what you Catholic think, he would go to Rome. Uh, you Presbyterians think he would go to your bishop. You Pentecostal think he'd go to the state presbyter. But he goes to wherever he wants to go. That's his business. Or oh, it would have to come to my denomination if he comes. That's what Philip thought or what Nathaniel thought. Could any good thing come from Nazareth, a little place like that? If the Messiah would come, he'd come to his great temple in Jerusalem. He would come, if this is a high priest, to be sounding out the alarm everywhere. You see, the way he represented himself that day wasn't to them kind of people, and it's the same today. He remains the same. His attitudes. Spirit doesn't change. People changes from one spirit to another, but spirit remains the same. Those stiff, orthodox teachers, they still remain today. Those humble, flexible people that was willing to bow in the presence of God, they are here yet today. And the Holy Spirit is here, and the spirit of the devil is here. You're possessed with one or the other, not both of them, one or the other. Can't serve two masters at once, the Scripture says. Now notice... What did he say? Could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? I think he gave him the best answer that any man could give him. said, come see. Don't sit at home and criticize. 
Don't just say, well, maybe it's all right. Come find out for yourself. That's the way to do it. Come sit down, listen to yourself, search the Scriptures. And along the road as they go along, let's follow them just a little bit. I can hear Philip say to Nathaniel, you know that old fisherman that day that you got the fish, you wanted him to sign the receipt and he couldn't sign it? Yeah. he come up into the presence of this Jesus of Nazareth and he told him who he was. He told him what his pappy's name was. Jonah. And you know, it wouldn't surprise me, but what he told you who you were when you come. Oh, now, just a minute. I don't believe in no such stuff as that. I'll have to see it with my own eyes. So come on. And when they got into the presence of Jesus, a 15-mile journey around the mountain, and when they come up in the presence of Jesus, perhaps into the prayer line, wherever it was, I do not know it, don't say but when he come into the presence of Jesus for the first time, watch what Jesus yesterday did. He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no God. Now he said, well, Of course he was dressed like that. All of them dressed the same. He could have been an Arab. He could have been Greek. All of them wore the outer robe garment with a turban. He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. He could have been a cheater, a murderer, a thief. And it astonished him so. That he said, Rabbi, which means teacher, when did you ever know me? What's the answer coming back? Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. What eyes? Fifteen miles around the mountain the day before. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same today, he's got to remain the same in his people today as he was then. Why did he say, I do nothing until the Father shows me? The Father had showed him that he was under the tree before he come. He showed him Simon, who he was, before he come. Told him who his Father was. You see, now that's the way Jesus started out representing himself. Now how many knows there's only three races of people? That's Ham, Shem, and Japheth's people. Certainly, it comes from the sons of Noah, if the Scripture's correct. All right. That's Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. The Samaritan is half Jew and Gentile. To you people who read your scripture, Peter had the keys of the kingdom. At Acts 2, he opened it to the Jews at Jerusalem. Went right on down. Philip went out and preached to the Samaritans. And one had been down there before him named Stephen, or not Stephen, but uh, let's see if I can call his name just a minute. Move my mind just now. Philip. And he went out and preached to them, and they had received the word, but hadn't received the Holy Ghost, because Peter had the keys, come down and laid hands on them, Holy Ghost come on them. Acts 10, 49, the Gentiles. Up there when Peter opened the gospel to the Gentiles, and from then, all nations had it. No more to speak of it. What was it? Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Now, when Jesus represented himself to the Jew, you see how he did it in the very first of his ministry? Now watch what Philip said. Thou art the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. That's what that real staunch Jew said when he said, I saw you before you, when you was under that tree, I saw you. And Philip said, Nathaniel said, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus said, because I told you I saw you under that tree, you believe me? He said, yes, so then you'll see greater than this. See, he was in position to know something, to get farther with God. But there were those who stood by the Jews, real scholars, Ph.D., D.D., double L.D., very scholarly. You know what they said? They said, this man is a fortune teller. He has the spirit of a devil, Beelzebub. How many know that? He does this by the power of Beelzebub, a fortune teller. And anybody knows that fortune telling to the devil. So he said, he he is a fortune teller, Beelzebub, the prince of them. He's the greatest of all the fortune tellers. And what did Jesus say? You say that against me, I'll forgive you. But when the Holy Ghost has come to do the same thing, one word against it will never be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. Is that what the Scripture says? So there are those who are born for eternal destination. There are those who can't help it. They're blind, and the devil has blinded their eyes. They'll never see it. They can't see it. 
And now remember, then we'll see, that's why he made himself known to the Jews. Now he goes by one day and St. John, pull your scripture over to the fourth chapter. Now he's in the first chapter there. Go to the fourth. I'm coming back to the third in just a minute. Then we're going to close. Notice. Then when he went over to the, the Samaritans, he was going to, and he passed through by Samaria, and he went to a certain city, and the well is still there on the outside of the city, a panoramic, something like this here, vines grew up around it, and a well. All the women go out there every morning and pack their water, they, and can talk as just women do, you know, and let their pot down, got the water, and put it up on their head. I see them set a big pot up on their head, all about five gallon, one on each hip. Walk right down the street talking, nod their head on another, nod their still a drop. This is perfect because they're raised some little children to that. And the disciples went in to get some bread, some food. Jesus sat alone. Why? The Bible said he had need to go by Samaria. And he sat down there. And out come, let's say she was a beautiful woman. Uh, of course, we understand here in this country that she was a prostitute. She had been married so many times and then living in adultery. And she came right by where Jesus was, let down her pot to get some water. And Jesus said, Woman, bring me a drink. And she said, Sir, it's not customary for you Jews to ask us Samaritans such things. Said, We have no uh, fellowship with each other. We have no such customs because there's a segregation. You are Jewish and I am a Samaritan woman. We have no such customs and no dealings with each other. Jesus said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And I'd bring you water, give you water, you don't come here to draw. What was he doing? Contacting her spirit. And she said, well, you say you're greater than our father Jacob who dug the well and he's, he drank from it and his children and his cattle and so forth. And talked about worship in the mountain at Jerusalem. The conversation went on until Jesus found where her trouble was. Does anybody know where her trouble was? Certainly. She had five husbands. He said, woman, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband, sir. said, that's right. You've had five husbands. And the one that you're now living with is not your husband. You've said, right. What did she say? That man's a fortune teller. No, she said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now, if you'll run that prophet back, it's the one that Moses is speaking of that would come. See? See? I perceive that you are a prophet. Now we, Samaritans, we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? Jesus said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she ran into the city and said, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? That woman knows more about God, that prostitute, and half the New England preachers. Right. Not only New England, but the whole world. See, they've just tied up so much with theology, that's all they know. But this woman was taught spiritual things, and she knew that when that prophet of prophets, that king of prophets, comes, that he would be the one that would reveal the secret of the heart. Oh, my! Why can't we wake up? Now, look. Not one time did Jesus ever do that in the presence of a Gentile. Not one time. Why? The gospel had not yet went to the Gentile. Anybody know that? When he was sure, he said he, he did not go to the Gentiles and he forbid his disciples to go to the Gentiles. Is that right? They go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. He forbid it. While the Gentiles has had 2,000 years in their church, they were heathens in them days. Our people were. Heathen, so they've got 2,000 years of theology. Now, if the closing of the Jews, when he turned his back to the Jews, and that's the way he made himself known to the Jews in that manner, he's got to do it in the closing of the Gentiles, or he did wrong when he manifested himself that way to the Jews. If we're going to close this Gentile dispensation with this theology, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm Pentecostal, I'm Methodist, I'm, I'm Catholic, if he closes like that, then he could not be just. He has to represent himself the same way he did to the Jew and to the Samaritan. Not one time in all history has he did it. Or this is the close of the Gentile dispensation. Right. The handwriting's on the wall, and you all know it. 
They got a Sputnik up here that we could be a satellite by in the morning. And the nations are trembling and shaking. And he promised he'd take a people out of the Gentiles for his name. But only those who God foreknew by election will he call. Your heart is hard. God be merciful. If your eyes are open to see, God bless you. That's right. For no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. They didn't see him. They didn't understand him. They thought he was a fanatic or a spiritualist or a devil. And them days, because their eyes were closed, the prophets said they would be closed. Many miracles he had done before, yet they could not believe St. Matthew 12, chapter because Isaiah said they got eyes and can't see, ears and can't hear. See? Although the miracles that he had done, yet they could not understand it. They said, the big church said he's the devil. So that's what they believed too. Now remember, God takes his man, but never his spirit. The devil takes his man, but never his spirit. The same spirit was on Elijah, came on Elisha. Same one was on Elisha, come on John the Baptist, 800 years later. The Holy Spirit that was on Christ, come on the church. And will remain until Jesus comes. Now what's happened? What's about different from this day than from the beginning? The prophet said there will be a time or day that it won't be neither day nor night. A dismal, foggy time. The sun rose in the east. That's what Jesus was on the eastern people. Samaritans and also to the Jews. He shined his light and that when he represented himself there. We've come through all this long day of just a dismal, enough to have churches, have theology, shake hands, put your name on the book, have denominations and so forth. But the prophet said it'll be light in the evening time. Did he say it? All right. How did civilization travel from east to the west? East and west is now met. We're at the Pacific coast. The next move is east again. Now what? Then the same sun that rises in the east sets in the west. The same Holy Spirit that come and declared Christ in the eastern people and spent all this years of theology and so forth, now has broke back the clouds and the light shining on the western people just before the setting of the sun. We're at the end time, my brother. We're at the end time, sister. Not me. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just your brother. I have not one thing to do with it. I'm just your brother and your servant in Christ, or fellow citizen of the kingdom. But Christ remains the same. And it's time for these things to happen. Hearts failing fear, spudniks in the skies. One Extra drink of vodka, they could pull a little lever and we'd be powder in two minutes. And the world would fly plumb into the sun now. They're just what the scripture predicts it'll do. But remember, the church will go home before that happens. And if that could happen before morning, what could happen to the church when it goes first? God's just to show himself that he still remains Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Have you got time for one more little quotation before we pray? Listen to this. One day Jesus is passing, and he went along to a, over a sea. There was a little man come down. His daughter was dead. And he said, I, I'll go wake her. And there was a woman up there that she seemed she couldn't get into the line. Man were pressing everywhere and patting him on the back and so forth. And he was walking along. Little humble sort of a fellow, the Bible said there's no beauty we should desire, and probably a little bitty man. And as he was going along, this little woman had a blood issue for many years, just to pass in the menopause, if you understand. And she said, in her heart, not in her head, in her heart, if I touch that man's garment, I'll be made well. He said to that, the Bible said he rebuked him. And said, while wow, the whole multitude just touched him, he said, yes, but I... I got weak. It's a different kind of a touch. Oh, Concord, give that touch. A touch. He said, I got weak. Virtue's gone from me. Strength. I got weak. And he looked around. See, everybody shaking their head. Not me, not me, not me. I don't know, not me. He looked around. He looked over in the audience. And he found the little woman. And he said, 
told her what her trouble was, and her faith had made her well. Is that right? Was that Jesus yesterday? Well, if he's the same today, only difference is his corporal body, as he promised, the vine working through the church. Is that right? That's his promise. You'd have to. Now, how many of you Bible students now, listen close. Does the scripture say in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ today is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Does he say it? It does. Then if he is a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, how would he act if he is a high priest and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? How would he act? He'd have to act the same way he did if he is the same. Is that right? So it isn't necessary if you be up here on a platform. You just believe what I've told you from God's Bible. And you say, Lord Jesus, I have need tonight. I have any prayer call. I won't be in the line. But this preacher has told me that, that you are the same. And that little woman touched your garment and you turned around to her. And you told her her conditions and that her faith had saved her. Lord God, do that for me tonight. Don't, don't, not me, you see. I have enough. See, it's just a gift that I yield myself to the Spirit. It's the Spirit working through both of us then, you see, that does it. That's the way it was with her. He didn't know who done it. But her faith in God had did it. Now, if he's the same, you can touch him tonight with a feeling of your infirmities. Is that true? true? Sirs, we would see Jesus. How many know that I have quoted page after page of what the Scripture says Jesus was yesterday? All of you believe that in the Bible? Now, if he will, with us, as God, not me, all of us together, cooperating together with the Holy Spirit, will do the same thing, heal the sick, and do the same thing that he did then, how many will say, I love him more if I am a Christian? And if I'm not, I will be a Christian. And if I've, if I've done wrong, I'll ask him to forgive me. If I'm sick, I'll accept my healing. How many will do it? Raise your hand and say, I'll do it. I'm a total stranger to every person here outside of Dr. Vale here. My son somewhere, uh, he may not even be here now. He's somewhere. That's all that I know in the meeting. Uh, I'll be this recording boy here. I've, I don't know who you are, son, but you've been along in the meeting. Same. That's the only person I know. How many knows out there that I'm strange to you? Raise your hands. Don't ever know. Christ doesn't know you. Did Billy give out prayer cards? Did he? Nothing but the scripture. That's all. All right. How many got missing, Billy? Oh, everybody is there. Then, well, that's fine, then. That's good. We'll start anyhow right there. All right. Now, I want you to be real reverent. Now, this is the time that when God must answer to his word or his word is false and I'm found a false witness. Is that right? I've quoted the scripture, quoted his promise, told you the day we lived in, whatever, what his promise was. Here it is. It's all sitting here. Showing you a picture of him that the FBI has hanging in Washington, D.C. is the only supernatural being was ever scientifically proved to be photographed. And what did it happen to be? The same Lord Jesus. No matter what that picture would look like, if it didn't bear the same fruit, it would be wrong. It would just be any kind of a lie. But if that light bears the fruit of the Lord Jesus, then that's him, the same one. By their what you shall know then? There you are. If this, you say, Brother Brandon, that you might be something else. This might be, might not be. But if it bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it'll do just exactly the way the Lord Jesus did. Is that right? If it doesn't, then it's not him. That's just all. I don't want nothing to do with it if it isn't. It must be him, or I don't want, I want the right thing, don't you? I don't want some man's teaching. I want what God said in his Bible. Now let us pray. Lord, this is the hour that something must happen. This is my first time in this lovely state. How I can remember my old friend Bert Call. How I can remember Grampy Lowe and all of them up in the northern part of this state. How we set out in them old sheds and talking out on the mountainsides and the great times that we've had together. God, some of those men may be sitting here tonight for all I know. This is their first time to represent you in this great state, right here in their capital. God, be merciful. Hide us, Lord. We're believers. We love you. We believe we're at the end of the road, Lord. We believe that you're coming right away. And we believe that you're now preparing your people's hearts to receive it. Oh, Lord, may we tonight do like those at Emmaus, as I have already spoken. 
May we look and see him do something just like he did before his crucifixion. Amen. Then we'll know that he's not no grave. The Jews never stole him away, no soldiers. He's alive. Two thousand years has passed, and you're still just as alive now as you was before the foundation of the world was ever laid and will be when there's no more moon or stars or sun. You'll ever be alive, and because you live, we live also, and your eternal life working in us, producing the same signs that you did according to your promise. God, let not these people miss that. Father, I commit it all to you. Submit myself to thee and let that angel of God whose picture is taken here. Oh, Christ, come now. That the people might know that I haven't falsely told them anything that's wrong. That it's truth. And you vindicate your word through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you who are operating this year, just watch it because I don't know how how weak I get, how weak my voice gets. I have no idea. It's vision. Is this the way? Now, don't move around. Just sit real still. Everybody, be in prayer. Be real regular. Now, here it happens to be tonight a woman, right what I was talking about. St. John 4. Here's the picture of St. John 4. Just a drama. Here's a woman. I've never seen her in my life. I guess we're strangers, are we, to one another? We don't know each other. All right, this is our first time meeting in life. Now, what if, if it was just like it was back there in the days when our Lord was here in a physical body? Now, what would he do? Could he say, lady, you're sick. I'm going to heal you. No, he doesn't do it that way. He's already did it. He would tell her where the trouble was or something just like he did the woman at the well. Wouldn't he if he's the same? Not all of you will admit that. All right. Now, knowing not the woman, she doesn't know me. Here's the Bible in my hands to God. I've never seen her in my life. As far as I know, that's passing a street or somewhere I don't know, or she's witness she don't know me and I don't know her. All right? Now, if something, if I said, lady, you're sick, I'm going to put my hands on you or go get well. Now, you could, you could believe that. That would be all right. See? That would be okay. And, but yet, she could have a doubt. But if the Holy Spirit, Christ, remains the same, will go back in her life and tell her something that she knows I know nothing about. Then, if he knows what has been, he surely will know what will be. Is that right? There's the miracle of it. Now, the Lord be blessed. And just, you say, what are you doing, Brother Branham? I'm waiting for his anointing, the angel of the Lord. Now, you just pray with me silently, quietly, while I just see what he would say. I got maybe to talk to the woman, being the first in the city here, is, is not making her um, just the first one to be dealing with, but it just happened to be that you had the, that card, and here you are. And those out there who doesn't have cards, they're waiting just for their part. But God knows you. I do not know you. He knows you ever since you was born. All the air that you breathe, he's gave it to you. All the food that you've eaten, the clothes that you've had, has been given to you by God. You believe that, do you? Mm-hmm. you do. Then if the Lord God is so good, and then will let me know what your trouble is, like you say, if you have some disease or something wrong, if he'll tell me that, you will believe him, won't you? You believe it come from him and he's interested in you? See, I'm trying to build your faith to a place to get the anointing on you, sister. See? So now, if you'll just, if you'll just, just look this way now, and just believe, just keep thinking with your heart. You just watch this way. Let him do the talking. See, you just keep believing. See what he's saying. Now, there's someone in the audience with a greater faith than Tangier, see? And you'll find it. Yes, here it is. The woman's not here for herself. She's here for someone else. That's your grandchild. It's in the school and has multiple sclerosis. And you're here for prayer for that child. That's the truth. Raise your hand if that's the truth. <laughs> you believe it gets its healing? All right, then go and find it just the way you've asked, and it'll be that way. All right, so then fine. If you believe it, then go rejoicing, thanking the Lord, and find it just the way you believe it. See? Have faith now. You believe that was him? 
See, I can't heal. I have no power to heal. But he can't heal now. See, it's your faith in his finished work. See, after he finished work 2,000 years, he's still here. I'd be real reverend. I don't believe I know you either. The Lord knows both of us, doesn't he? Do you believe that God will grant to you the things that somebody in the audience... I'd be real reverend. Scripture says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Have faith in God. Here it is. It's a lady sitting right back out here, right behind that young gentleman there with the, the checkered looking shirt on, spotted. A lady sitting right behind him is suffering with an elephantitis that she's wanting God to heal her for him. You believe that God will heal you, lady, and make you well? Sitting right back straight behind a young man there. Do you believe with all your heart? She's got her head down praying, kind of a heavy set lady, with a little jacket like on. If you believe with all your heart, you can have what you've asked for. It leaves the woman. It comes to another faithful person. A lady sitting here has got bare cause veins sitting here looking right at me. Sitting right down here. You believe God heals you, lady? You do? All right, you can have your healing. God bless you. You don't have a prayer card. You don't need one. See, your faith did it. There you are. What did she touch? I don't know you, do I, lady? Never seen you in my life as far as I know of. You're just a stranger that sits there. No prayer card, nothing. Just come in and sit down. What did you do? You, you know if something's happened to you, don't you? If that's right, wave your hands back and forth like this. Sure. See? Your faith did it. What did she do? Touch me? She touched the high priest. Jesus Christ, and he gives to her the desire of her heart. Here's a lady sitting right back there. She's got the same thing, sitting with a little pen on her, a little flower on her, like that. Verkoy's veins. <laughs> that's right, lady, isn't it? Raise up your hand if that's right. That's here's the lady. Right here's a little pink flower on her coat. Elder lady with glasses on. I don't know you do, a lady. You accept your healing too? God bless you then. Go and receive it. Mm -hmm. You know why it's left this woman here? You know why it left and went out there? Not because she hasn't faith. She has. She don't know what I'm talking about. She doesn't understand English too well. She's a Finn. She's a Finn. Finland, Jesus. <laughs> Our trouble. <laughs> it's all gone now. On your road, Uncle Hugh. Oh, God. 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 Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know that. From near the Lapland. If thou canst believe. Are you believing? Just have faith in God. We are strangers to each other, sir, I suppose. But the Lord God knows us both. This would be, as far as I know, the first man that's come in the line. All right, let's take this as a Bible picture. When Philip... Went and got Nathaniel I was talking about tonight and brought Nathaniel and he told him about knowing who Peter was and so forth coming over. Do you believe that same Jesus lives tonight? Yeah. Do you believe it in the audience that he lives? You are suffering with a kidney trouble and with a heart trouble. That is true. 
That's right, raise up your hand. You say you might have guessed that, Brother Branham. Oh, no. It isn't a guess, my friend. Here, let's talk to the man just a little longer. I come from somewhere out there. I couldn't catch where it was. So I don't know you do it, sir. We're strangers. But what I said was the truth. Then that wasn't my voice. It was somebody else's voice. You believe it was the voice of Christ speaking like he said he'd speak? You no, know, That's right, sir. All right. If you believe like that, then you'll see greater things. You believe that? I do. All right, sir. Then you've got a wife here. And she's, she's suffering with headaches and a nervous trouble. That's right. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Yes, sir. And your name is Mr. Green, isn't it? That's right. Or go on your road, you're healed. You see greater things than the God bless you on your road. If thou canst believe, do you believe? All things are possible. Just real reverend. The little lady sitting back there, right next to the gentleman sitting next to the inn back there, suffering with arthritis. Do you believe the Lord Jesus will make you well, lady? Sitting right back here, sitting right here, next on this middle row of a section right back. Say, see she that light above the woman? Now, she'll just see it and accept it. There it is. She's got her head down. She's praying. Will you believe it, lady? The little pink-looking dress on. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. But you see, it left her. See, you must respond. You must do as you're told quickly. Be alert, watching. Grace is a wonderful thing. See? Be alert, be watching. She never left the audience yet. <laughs> Don't press yourself. Just be relaxed. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. Well, you should believe, shouldn't you? There's nothing else. See, I, I don't heal people. I can't do it. I've never even touched a person. See, you're touching him. How many get it? Now, how many believe it? With all your heart. Well, that ought to settle it then. You shouldn't have to go any farther. We got a man. The lady there with kidney trouble. Or if you believe it, lady... You can have your healing too, if thou canst believe. And the gentleman also sitting on the end, thou canst believe all things are possible. To you, my brother. I don't know you. God does know you, doesn't he? You're suffering with a heart trouble. It's your bother with your heart. I see something happen to you. You've been all bothered for it's some kind of an accident. Like a car accident you've been in. What's called that? That's right. That's exactly right. Go on your road. Your heart trouble's finished. Jesus Christ makes you well. Come, lady. I catch a spirit coming from there thinking I'm reading their mind. Touch my hand, lady. If I will tell you by God's spirit, if he'll reveal to me what's wrong with you and me looking this way, will you, you know where it's truth or not, won't you? All right, so then diabetes won't bother you anymore. You can go be well. God bless you. See? Have faith. Come, lady. Touch my hand. If God will heal you that stomach trouble, will you be happy? Raise up your hand if you will. Go eat your supper. All right? Just have faith in God. Don't doubt at all. Come here, lady. If God will heal you that heart trouble, will you be happy for it? If you will, raise up your hand. Say, thank you, Lord. Go on your road and rejoice. Be happy now. That arthritis gets pretty sore sometimes, doesn't it? Especially when you're trying to get up in the morning, move out of bed sideways. Well, go ahead and believe it. It won't, it won't happen anymore if you'll believe it. <clears throat> As with an awful pain cause you to cough and everything, you believe God will make you well of it? Just keep moving. Saying, Thank you, dear God. Believe it with all your heart. Move, yes, go believe it with all your heart. Don't doubt. Your back's bothering you, so just go ahead and believe God. You'll, you believe every one of you? How many does believe with all your heart? Does the Bible say these signs shall follow them that believe? Did he keep his promise? Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? If you believe it, raise up your hand. Well, Jesus, the last words he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. How many knows the Bible says that? Then lay your hands on one another. Put your hands over on each other. Each one of you now. 
Just lay your hands over on one another. Oh, my. He's here. He's not dead. You please sit your head. If you have trouble, quit coughing and everything, you'll be all right. Go on your road and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. If thou canst believe. You two lay your hands on each other right there. Right there as you go. Now we're getting set for a drama. Somebody, lay their hands on somebody near you now. Somebody near you, lay your hands on them. If God keeps this promise, He keeps, what is it? It's the sign that He's here. That, is He the same yesterday, day, and forever? Say amen. If that's that if He keeps that word, He keeps all of His words. Then He said, if you raise your hands that you were believers, then He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, each one of you, in the own way you pray at your church, you pray for the person you've got your hands on, and you, they'll pray back for you. Each one, I'll pray for you all, all of you, and you'll see a healing take place here. There won't be a feeble person in your midst if you believe that Jesus Christ is here right now. There won't be one sick person left in this building or one feeble person if you believe that he is the same yesterday and ever, and this spirit that's among us now is him vindicating that he's here. Do you believe it now? Let's bow our head. Almighty and eternal God, who we love and believe and cherish the Son, Jesus. Satan has bound these people with sicknesses, fears, doubts, diseases. Lord God, it's near the end time. You might come before morning. And we are so happy to know that we have fellowship in the presence of the risen Lord Jesus, who's right here now proving himself the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God, give these people faith to believe. Each one of them confess in faith and lay their hands upon some neighbor that's near them that they are now praying for. And I ask you, God, to give faith that will not take no for an answer. Grant it, Lord. Now help me to have faith as I go forward in faith to charge this enemy. Satan, the enemy of affliction and sickness, you have no legal rights to hold any of these people. Jesus Christ died for each of them that they could be healed. His back was beat into welts and stripes. At, and he hung on Calvary, died, and rose again to come in the form of the Holy Ghost to vindicate to his people that they might have faith in him. And every right that you had over sin was stripped from you at that time. You have no legal right, therefore you're just a bluff, and we're calling that tonight. By the witness of the Holy Ghost that's now present, the risen Jesus Christ, the Spirit who has his picture taken here with us, who's working with us now and in us, Thou sickness of and diseases that's in the body of these people, I charge thee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Come out of the people and let them go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe you're healed? If you do, stand up on your feet right quick and give God praise. Each one of you, stand up on your feet and thank the Lord God for your healing. That's good. That's good. Fine. Wonderful. There's the healing. Of the, the sick and the afflicted. Let's raise your hands now and just say, Thank you, Lord. And let's sing this good old song with your hands up in the air. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give us a card, if you will, my brother. All right. Brother. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise Brother, come up in there and believe him. We'll praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinner. That's right, man standing up on the wheelchair giving God glory. Believe it, brother. 
Your time is here now. You know you got it, don't you? Raise your hands up to him. There it is. A man sitting bound in a wheelchair. Raise that out of the wheelchair just now. Washed away. Raise up your hands on. Praise him in your own way. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. He is in the midst of you people. He is your Savior. He's your healer. Everyone is healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim it and glorify God. Amen.